What's up? <laughs> I am here to share with you guys. Well, first of all, I'm here to get ready and do my makeup, but I'm here to share with you guys the birth story of our second baby. Her name is Felicity Rose. And so I'm gonna share about how it all went down, why we picked the name, just all of those kinds of things, the questions I've been getting for a long time. And I was gonna do this like already ready and just talk to you guys, but honestly, I like getting ready on camera. Like it's just fun to like talk and do it. And I know a lot of you guys like this method as well, or like this filming style, video style, you know what I mean? So that's what we're gonna do. Hope you're cool with it. I just threw on the e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm, and I also threw on the Tatcha Water Cream Moisturizer. This is like a little trial size. This is not a favor. I'm honestly using this up. I don't, I love a lot of Tatcha products. The water cream, I have drier skin. It's not enough moisture. I really like their dewy skin cream, but like I said, using that up. I think if you had oily skin, you might like it though, because it kind of like sinks in fast. Like it doesn't add the look of moisture. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't know that I'm making any sense. I don't know where to begin though. Where do I begin? Let's start at the very beginning. So I'm gonna assume if you're watching this video, you've maybe seen other videos of mine where I talk about some of the stuff that was going on. So I'm gonna gloss over the pregnancy. I'll, I'll give some quick things that are important to the story, but I'm not gonna get into super detail about that because I've talked about it. And if you wanna see some of my previous pregnancy baby videos, I've got like pregnancy must have, baby product regrets and things I'm doing differently with for the second baby, I'll link my playlist below because there's a lot of good info there. Anyway, so with this pregnancy, it went a lot smoother than with our first. And just generally, there were not a lot of crazy hiccups. The biggest one was just that she was breech. So we did a lot to try to turn her because I had a vaginal birth with Genevieve, my first daughter, and I was hoping to have that again. So we, I did chiropractic care, like if you look into it, there's perhaps could possibly, they could possibly help with that. I did all kinds of the spinning babies moves and there's, there's so much, okay? Then we tried what is called a version, an ECV where my doctor, it's in a hospital setting, you're like hooked up to an IV just in case and she manually tries to turn her from the outside. That was so painful, so painful. And I've read some people like, no, it didn't hurt me at all. I'm like, okay. That was honestly worse pain than freaking childbirth. Like it was awful anyway. So it didn't work. <laughs> In the end, it was probably a good thing because we ended up going through with a scheduled C-section. And the reality was we scheduled it for, it was like 39 weeks and three days, I think. Sorry, I also have a cold, so just, <laughs> sorry, I had to deal with it. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Coffee's just been hitting different on the other side of pregnancy, you know? Whoop! Where am I at here? So we scheduled it for 33 or 39 weeks, uh, three days, I think is what it was. If I had gone into labor before then, I basically asked my doctor, like, what do I do? Like, I mean, that's okay, right? <laughs> She's like, yeah, just don't wait as long as you would for like a normal birth. Like, don't get as far into the contractions because we'd still be doing a C-section assuming your baby is still breech. In that case, we need a little more time, most likely. So that was kind of in my mind, like, okay. And so the weeks leading up, I was already having off and on contractions. And I even think there was one evening I could not sleep. And I think it's what's called prodromal labor, where basically you're having kind of like labor contractions pretty regularly, but they don't actually advance into labor. Different than like Braxton Hicks and stuff. Anyway, it was really odd. And then in the end, like after a few hours, they just stopped completely and nothing had changed. So I'm like, okay, so I went back to bed and that was that. And anyway, so that was kind of odd. I never had had that experience the first time. Anyway, we get to the day and that ended up being what we did. We did, I'm just, do I wanna put another layer? This is the Tower 28 Sunny Days. I really like it. It's been one of my go-tos these first few weeks after having a baby because it's, I think it's really pretty, but it's really easy to blend. Like it doesn't look super makeup-y, but I'm gonna put another little layer on. Our induction was scheduled, or the C-section I should say, not induction. April 5th rolls around and the C-section was scheduled for seven in the morning. And the good news about it being so early is that you have to fast for it. And boy, does anyone like fasting? It's awful, right? And so I was like, dang. So I was glad it was in the morning so I could still eat the night before, like a regular dinner. And then I'm really, it, 
you know, you're up so early, you don't even notice that you're hungry. You do notice, however, that you need some coffee. <laughs> you're a coffee lover. When I say that I don't think I slept a freaking wink, I did not sleep a wink. Like I was just so excited and anxious and I just kept thinking, I was like laying in bed and I kept thinking about how crazy it is that like it was 4 a.m. and I'm like in like three hours, this baby that's kicking around in my stomach is gonna be in my arms. That's crazy. So that was one of the weirdest things about like specifically a scheduled C-section was that you know the time and the surgery does not take long. So you know like that is the general window barring anything weird happening. That's the general window that you're actually going to meet your baby. That's crazy. Cause in labor, it could take a full day. You know what I mean? It could take a long time. So that was wild, couldn't sleep. Finally, it was like, we had to be at the hospital at like five in the morning. And so 4.30ish, we're getting ready, getting our stuff all in the car. And most of it had already been in the car like for a week or two anyway, like our bags and stuff. And like the boppy pillow I wanted to bring and blanket I wanted to bring. If you wanna see what was in my hospital bag, I'll link that video because I was very, very specific and very thorough. And I had links to like all the Amazon and Target things. And I used a lot of what was in that bag. I got a lot of questions about what I did and didn't use. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a full on video on that or not, we'll see. But I used a lot of what was in there. So I was kind of surprised anyway. So we get into the car, we get to the hospital. It's like 5 a.m. We go up to the maternity area of the hospital and we'd already been in there once before. Well, twice, once for the version. The second time was because there was, and this is something I did wanna bring up. I had a moment and it was like a week before the scheduled C-section, I had a moment where I was like, I feel like I haven't hurt, felt her move very much in my stomach. And I kept thinking about it and it kept gnawing away at me. So finally I mentioned it to Tyler. And so we looked up like things you can do to get it to move. And I tried all of those things and she was, I would feel her move. So I knew she was still kicking, you know, but it, it was just weird. I just had this weird feeling. And so finally Tyler was like, Jessica, and then I started crying because of course I did. And Tyler was like, all right. And so he ended up calling our doctor's office because I was just suddenly inconsolable. And they were like, let's go ahead and come on in and we'll just do like a, I think it was technically a non-stress test. I don't know. But basically check on the baby, check the heartbeat, make sure everything's okay. So we go in, they hook me all up and she was just fine. And then all of a sudden she's moving like crazy and all that stuff. But it... It was such a relief to go in and know for sure because you never know and crazier things have happened. So if you're someone that you're pregnant now or in the future you're pregnant and you just have this weird feeling, don't doubt yourself, just go in or just call at least. Trust your gut and if you're wrong, oh well. We were in the hospital for like two hours and then we went home. Like it was no big deal, but I felt so much better knowing that they checked on her. Okay, the one downside to not having all my makeup here is like, I'm like, crap, do I have that? I do, okay. Elf wow brow, baby. Gotta have it. So we get there, they get me all hooked up. And the one thing I appreciated, cause I was super, I mean, I've never had a C-section. I was so anxious the way I think anyone would be, regardless of whether you've had one or not, or whether you've had a baby or not. Very, very anxious. And they were just so lovely. And they really put my fears at ease. Like one of the nurses sat with me and she was like, I'm gonna tell you everything that is going to go down. And so she literally sat with me for like 20 minutes and Tyler obviously too, and just told us from beginning to end everything that was gonna happen. And it was so specific and for me, I'm such a logistical person and hearing all the logistics of everything made me feel so much better. Like I went into that room, the operating room, knowing exactly what was gonna happen. And obviously I, please, I had done ton, probably too much research. At one point, my best friend Emily was like, Jessica, cause she had had a C-section previously and I'd been talking to her about it and she was like, Jessica, <laughs> No more questions. Like you you know enough, like you don't need to worry. Cause I had asked her so many questions, <laughs> but that's what I needed to hear. Like in that moment, I was like, I needed her to say like, just chill, you're gonna be fine. Anyway, so that really put me at ease. So we get into the operating room and I'm trying to think if anything eventful happened before that. But I, I appreciate like my doctor came into the, triage room, which is basically what I was in before we went to the operating room. She, you know, was checking in on me. They did another ultrasound to make sure that the baby was still breached because if she wasn't, I even asked her, I'm like, what if, you know, here I am and we do this ultrasound and she flipped herself. Like, what do we do? She was like, we would induce you today. So obviously we wouldn't go through with the C-section because that was the only reason we were doing a C-section, but we would go ahead and induce you today just because you're already here. You already have like, you know, childcare lined up and your dog at the, you know. So that, that was kind of nice. So either way, it was gonna happen that day. Oh, I guess I should tell you what I've been using. I told you the e.l.f. Wow Brow. The concealer I used was the Catrice True Skin 
concealer. Love this stuff, you guys. And then I just use the Bare Minerals Concealer Powder on top. You guys know I love that. And I use the shade Bisque. I don't think I'm gonna worry about crazy eyeshadow. I think I'm just gonna do like a nude all over. This one is so crazy. It's the Wet n Wild Always Naked palette. I've been talking about a lot because it's so good. But it is so pigmented and I've just been taking this and just tapping it all over and just kind of blending it. And it just kind of evens everything out and looks a little more finished than if I just put nothing on. Anyway, so I appreciate the doctor checked that to me, <laughs> make sure she was breached and check all that. So we get into the operating room and the thing I kept mentioning to everyone that came in the room, the anesthesiologist introduced herself to me in the triage room and she said, do you have any questions, concerns? And I said, okay. <laughs> I am terrified to feel nauseous and like need to throw up while going under anesthesia. So the anesthesia they gave was, um, it, well, it was a spinal block. I had had an epidural with my first baby. And so I knew that I handled that well, you know what I mean? Like it didn't make me feel sick or anything. But with the spinal block, I, I just wasn't sure. And I'd heard horror stories because of course, you know, you look anything up on the internet and it's always worst case scenario. So anyway, so I told her like, I'm really, really nervous about feeling nauseous. Is there anything you can do for me if I do feel? And she said, yep, I'll be right behind your head the whole time. And if at any point you're feeling nauseous, let me know. And I've got different anti-nausea medications I can give you. I'm like, okay, great. We get in the room. I have a nurse like kind of holding me so they can do the spinal block. And so she's talking to me and get my mind off things. And it hurt a little bit, but it wasn't anything too terribly crazy and I was thankful for it because I mean my gosh this is like straight up a full-on surgery that you're going into I don't want to feel anything you know what I mean so it is a necessary little pain to be able to then not feel this freaking surgery anyway she does the spinal block and I've been told that the second it happens it acts fast and it's that my doctor told me it's a little bit of an unsettling feeling how quickly you lose feeling and uh, it, the idea of that also freaked me out and so I'm like, okay, so once they got it in, the nurse whips my legs around and they lay you down really quickly because again, you're gonna lose feeling like that. Like I was already starting to lose feeling while they're like whipping me around to lay me down. So I'm wearing a mask, obviously. And I, I wasn't sure what it would be like. Like obviously they're all in the operating room, non COVID times, they'd be wearing a mask, right? Like that is, I'm pretty sure protocol, right? In a, you know, super um, clean environment like that. And so I was wearing a mask and I'd ask like, am I, do I have to wear a mask during this? I'm a little bit freaked out because I can feel claustrophobic. I've worn masks for two years. It's never bothered me. But in a moment where I'm going through something, I don't want to say traumatic, but something crazy like having a baby or having a big surgery and then like not being able to have feeling and then maybe feeling nauseous. I wondered, I was like, I feel like I'm gonna kind of freak out having the mask on my face and not being able to get my hands up and move it. And anyway, sure enough, about a minute into feeling numb from the waist down, really from like the chest down, I started feeling nauseous and I'm starting to like sweat and I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I said, can I take my mask off? And the anesthesiologist is like, no, you know, I hope you understand, but you can't. I'm like, I understand. And I'm trying to be so brave. Like I get it, I understand. And so so I'm like, okay, I'm feeling nauseous though. And she's like, okay, I, I'll uh, get you some medication in there right now. I'm like, okay. And so she said, it might take a minute or two to kick in. I'm like, okay. And another minute passes and I'm like really freaking out y'all. Like they haven't started any surgery. I am losing it just laying there feeling so sick. And I'm like, I, what do I do if I'm shouting in the operating room? Like, what do I do if I need to throw up? Like I've got a mask on, like I can't really move that far. Where do I throw up if I need to? And she said, you know, if you need to throw up, just turn to the side. <laughs> and so finally another minute passes and I'm I'm still feeling sick. And I said, I, I, have you given me the medicine yet? I'm still feeling sick. I was being so dramatic, but in the moment, you guys, I was not being dramatic. I don't know where I'm at in the story, but basically I finally got to a point where I was like, I seriously need to take the mask off. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. I feel like I'll feel better if I don't have it on. I think that's what I said. And she said, okay. So she took it off for me and I was like, oh, Y'all, when I say I instantly felt better, and maybe it was that the medicine kicked in right in that moment too, but I felt so much better. So I was thankful for that lovely anesthesiologist that listened to me. And from then on, I finally felt like I could relax. And literally from that moment on, I know that sounded so chaotic. It was such a short amount of time. After that, everything was so peaceful. Everything was so zen. And it's so crazy because you know, I've built up this C-section in my mind so much. And, you know, for everyone in the operating room, this was freaking by rote for them. You know, they are so good at what they do and they do C-sections so often 
that for them it was just another Tuesday morning. And uh, anyway, so the the surgery starts. I'm, am I being way too specific? I <laughs> I feel like I am. So the surgery starts and my doctor of course is in there doing it and it was so like, I don't know. I struggle to find the words because like, you know, it's starting and I'm already tearing up and they finally brought Tyler back in and he's got like scrubs on or you know what I mean, whatever. It's not actually scrubs, but anyway, you know, we're just kind of holding hands and he, we're all behind the, the tarp so we can't see anything. And I'm just like crying, but it's all happy tears because I know like literally in a matter of minutes, I'm going to meet my daughter. And that is the weirdest thing to not have any real control in that moment over anything, but just knowing that really, really soon, like it just makes your heart pound in the coolest of ways. Like it was so bizarre. Let me just finish the liner. Cause you know, I can't talk and do this at the same time. All right. That's, they ain't even, but <laughs> We gotta stop or else we'll just keep getting thicker. So Tyler's in there. I'm kind of crying happy tears. Boy, after about 10 minutes, maybe not even, there's sweet baby. And they held her up so we could see her and Tyler got a picture of her kind of the doctor holding her like Lion King style in the air, you know? And then really I'm just crying. And again, it's so weird because then they have to take the baby away to be, you know, do the Apgar scores and all that stuff. And I'm just laying there and Tyler's over with the the NICU team, you know, taking pictures and stuff and seeing her and I'm just laying there and I can hear her crying and I'm so happy and I'm just crying, but I'm just alone behind the tarp. Like it was such a bizarre moment, but boy, the minutes just fly by and all of a sudden Tyler's got her over there. And a few things of note here to mention is that Genevieve, my first baby was whisked to the NICU right away when I had her and I didn't know that was going to happen. You know, I had a lot of postpartum depression. I had, I mean, it was just, there was a lot. It was a very traumatic experience. And so basically I was told beforehand, no matter what in a C-section, the NICU team is always there. That is the standard. They're the ones that are looking at the baby, doing the APGAR scores, making sure everything's okay. And assuming everything is, after about 10 minutes, you'll see the NICU team, and I think they were like all in yellow, you'll see the NICU team leave. And I tell you that for a reason. They were dealing with sweet baby girl, and Tyler's over there, and I'm just sitting there crying alone behind a tarp while they're sewing me back up, right? And I am just thinking about the difference between those two births and how like, I, I really hope she doesn't have to go to the NICU. I hope she's healthy, you know? And all of a sudden I see the NICU team, like one of them peek around and say, she's beautiful, she's perfect, something like that. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> and so I see her leave and then I see like three or four more NICU people, doctors, nurses, you know, look at me and say, she's, she's doing great. And they all left. In that moment, I'm gonna cry all over again, that moment of watching the NICU team leave was such a powerful, like I will never forget it. And I just cried even harder because I'm like, oh my gosh, like she's healthy. Like we, it was just so, it was incredible. What an incredible moment for me. And of course for Felicity, but you know what I mean. So the other, I think kind of cool thing. So when they first get a baby out during a C-section, there can be like a minute where they're not crying yet. And the idea of that freaked me out because I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's gonna be the longest minute of our life. And our doctor even told us like, just so you know, that's normal, but it will feel like the longest minute of your life until you hear that baby cry. And I, that freaked me out. And I remember, I might've even shared this in another video, like asking my husband Tyler, like, hey, what are you the most anxious about? It was like a day or two before. Like, what is the thing that kind of keeps you up at night about all this? And he was like, that, that moment. He was like, I, the idea of that is terrifying. That minute is gonna feel so long until we know she's okay and she's breathing and she's crying. So I prayed so hard that she would cry quickly and we wouldn't have to, you know, suffer in that minute. Y'all, when I say that, that Miss Felicity Rose entered the world instantly crying, I mean, literally the nurses were like, oh my gosh, she's got some lungs on her. And they were just incredulous at how quickly she started crying. And I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I just remember that moment because Tyler and I just looked at each other like, oh my gosh, like it was just so exciting. So that girl screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed. And it was the best sound in the world to me, the prettiest sound in the world. Those two moments, the NICU team leaving and her just screaming was definitely the two I mean, two of the greatest moments that day. I mean, obviously there were many more. That is pretty much it. She, my doc was sewing me up and I was laughing. You know, I talked about how it was so by rote for all of them. They do this all the time. I literally, my doctor was talking with the other uh, people in there about how there's a new Chick-fil-A opening and <laughs> like just normal everyday topics. And here I am having like the a huge moment in my life and I'm never gonna forget that she's sewing me up and talking about 
much if we opening. It was just crazy. So again, all those minutes fly by her sewing me up. I don't feel anything. And so finally they like flip me over onto another, you know, a roll away bed and they hand me sweet Miss Felicity and I got to hold her and they wheel us to like a recovery room. And A, I was super ecstatic that I got to hold her so soon after. Cause that was another thing in my mind. Like, you know, I'm doing the C-section. Like, am I going to get to breastfeed her if I want to? Am I going to get to do like skin to skin with her if I want to? Like how, how long is between when she's born and when I actually get to hold her? And it really was like 30 minutes, maybe like it was so fast. And it's funny. Cause again, that was something I was so concerned about. Yeah. I want to use this, the Too Faced milk chocolate. Oh, I used the Essence Volume Stylist mascara and then the Makeup by Mario Brown liner and the Physicians Formula waterproof liquid liner. You, if you watch my channel, you're not surprised by any of this stuff, these are like my tried and trues right now. We get to the recovery room and I get to start breastfeeding and the nurse there was super helpful because breastfeeding did not go super well with Genevieve. And so I was really determined to give it another try, but like with the mentality that if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. Like Gigi was formula fed after the first, I never know exactly how long it was that I actually breastfed her. Like in my head, it was like two months, but then some of you guys were like, no, it was shorter than that. Cause like I talked about it in videos, I'm like, well, then was it only a few weeks? I genuinely don't know. That whole time is such a blur. It's such a blur anyway, probably for the better. <laughs> she was formula fed all the rest of that once I stopped and she freaking thrived, thrived. So I know it's not a big deal, but there is a certain feeling you feel, or at least I did, that you're like, why am I such a failure? Like, why can't I do this? And you know, some things are beyond your control and that's okay. So the nurse there in the recovery room was so helpful and was helping me with the breastfeeding and like getting her to latch for the very first time and like all these things. And that was so nice because the first time around I felt like none of the people there were as helpful. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Anyway. Oh, I did discover, by the way, I was talking about this Sephora number 64 brush. I wasn't sure if they still sold this because they revamped the line. They do. The brush, like the actual colors of the bristles look different, but it's the same brush. So if you were curious, this works great with powder bronzer, but it works really well with cream bronzer too. Okay. So that was really nice. We were in the recovery room for a while. I was like eating ice chips, starving, wanting to eat real food. Then we moved to our like final room for the remainder of our stay. You know, it was just lovely. The whole staff. I mean, I will say there were a couple of moments, like they always say the second night of a baby's life is the hardest. And like, we were even given a handout of like basically about baby second night and how they're at that point, they kind of realize they're no longer in the womb. And so it's usually a little bit rougher of a night. And for me mentally, the second night, the Felicity was not bad the second night. Like I felt like it was kind of normal. It was me. Like I woke up, I could not sleep. And I'm just like pace. Literally, I finally could stand up, which was really nice. And I just remember standing up and being like, I, it was just like a way wave of like anxiety and like, I can't do this. Like, this is so hard. Like, why did we have a second baby? Like all these wild rush of emotions. Finally, I got a little more sleep and I felt a lot better. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that was just good old sleep deprivation because I hadn't slept the night before the C-section and I didn't sleep well the first night we were there. And this is the second night. So anyway, long story short, it passed. Thank goodness. But it was just one of those like crazy hormonal moments. But what didn't help is that her latch was really, really painful. And so I, ha I, kept, I had so many lactation consultants in that room, you guys, they were probably so tired of me, but I kept being like, is this look right? Like I keep messing with it. Is this look right? And they were like, yes, that looks fine. But she has a little bit of a lip tie. And so they were like, we had the surgery on Genevieve and it did not help. So I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna go through that again with Felicity. So it's gotten better, but I've been using like a shield and that helped so much so that I could literally heal because it was hurting so bad. And so now I kind of toggle back and forth with and without, but she's doing great. So that's pretty much the hospital stay. We had some grandparents visit, which was nice, our parents, and we didn't think we'd be able, they'd be able to, but they'd change the visitor restrictions like the day before. So they were able to come visit, which was just so lovely and unexpected. We thought we would just have no visitors. Miss Genevieve got to come visit and got to meet her sister for the first time. And that was very emotional for me, of course. And it was just weird. I'd always been told like, oh, when your older sibling comes to visit and you see the older sibling next to the baby, you're going to realize how big the sibling is. And uh, when I say Genevieve looked like gigantic to me, I couldn't believe it. I was like, her head is, I mean, her head is not that big, but her head is so big compared to it. And oh my gosh, her arms are so thick compared to her. Like 
It was wild to see her from that perspective. So that was weird. She was being very, very standoffish towards me. Like she was all about Tyler, but she didn't really want anything to do with me. And you know that was breaking my heart, but I knew I'm like, Jessica, this is normal. Like this is totally normal. I'm I'm not in my normal clothes. I don't quite look quite like myself. And you know what I mean? And we're in a weird setting and she obviously knows that we now have this baby and it's just different. So it's much better now. We're three weeks past and she will go up to her and like kiss her on the head and she'll just like look at her and it's really, really sweet. So all is well in Gigi and Felicity land, which is great. Oh, one last thing about the hospital. We only stayed two days. So with the C-section, I think you're supposed to typically stay three, but it can be like two to three. And since we really didn't have too many complications, I still can't believe that. So thankful. I basically just kept asking like, okay, can we get the catheter out? Okay, can we, can I walk? Can I, <laughs> it's like really pushing it. I wanted to go home. <laughs> I wanted to be with Genevieve. I wanted to be home. And it's funny because the first time around, we I remember really wanting to go home, but I also was nervous because we'd never had a, our own baby at home. Now I'm like, I've got a little experience. I want to be home. So we only stayed two days. They let us go after that. And of course he had to, they had to take certain tests to make sure everything was good. But I was so glad to be home. It felt so much better to be home. So I want to tell you guys about Baby Blues and the name. So the name Felicity Rose, it was kind of like, not on either of our radar. We had other names in mind and there was one front runner. I'm not gonna say here in case we ever use it in the future. I don't know that we're gonna have another kid, but you never know. The name Felicity is one, like I said, wasn't on our radar, but we were actually at a Christmas Carol, like the musical. And one of the smaller characters is named Felicity in it. And I was like, gosh, I really like that name. Like, it's just so pretty. And I've always liked it ever since like American Girls, Felicity, she was like the Revolutionary War era. American girl. And of course, Felicity, like Felice, it means happy or happiness. And I'm like, I love that. I love that mentality because that's how we felt. You know, we tried for a year to get pregnant. And so when we finally were like, we felt nothing but a whole lot of happiness. And so it just felt right. And so Tyler kind of was trying on the name for a few days. And I just hit us one day that we were like, that's the name. Like that's the first one that we both felt strongly enough about. It's just such a beautiful name. I love it so much. So Rose, really we just loved the way it sounded together, but a bonus meaning for Rose is that Rose is another important family name for reasons I'm not gonna get into right here because I don't feel like, sometimes it's not my business to share certain things, but it's a, a really special family name too. So that felt right, that it sounded really good with it, but then it also had this bonus meaning. So that is her name. We've also gotten questions about like, what are we gonna do for like a nickname? And really, you know, with Genevieve, we knew Gigi was gonna be her nickname. Like that was a piece of the puzzle for us in naming her that. Felicity, we were like, Fifi, no. Like Gigi and Fifi, that's absolutely not. Like that's too much. So we went through a lot of uh, different iterations of a nickname. And finally, I was like, what about Lissy? Cause I was like, odds are Genevieve will call her something like Lissy, especially while she's young too, you know? And we were like, okay, that's pretty cute. So that was kind of the thing that sealed the deal. Like, okay, we can do Felicity because Lissy is a cute nickname. The reality is she might be someone that just doesn't go by a nickname. You know, like not everyone does. Like Tyler, he does not go by Ty. He goes by Tyler, even though Felicity is a longer name. I know, I know, but you know what I'm saying? So we'll see what, you know, how it changes and morphs. But for now, we're just not calling her by a nickname. We're just calling her Felicity or sweet baby girl, or pumpkin. <laughs> oh, the powder I put on earlier was the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil. I don't love that for an all over powder. I actually like it better as under eye. I just wanted to try it that way. The blush I used was M Cosmetics, the Magic Hour blush. So freaking pretty, you guys. The highlight was the Lorac Daylight highlighter. I don't even know if this is still sold. If it is, it is a stellar highlight. I just don't know if it's still sold. And then I used my new Sephora gel lip liner. It's the new shade I got, nothing but nude, really good nude. And then I, again, used the Merit Signature Lipstick in Slip. I freaking love this lipstick. It doesn't really work with this, but who really cares? I didn't want to go like pink, so maybe this is the best option. So the other thing, now that we're ready and can just chill, the other thing I wanted to talk about was baby blues So and postpartum depression. So I had postpartum depression really bad with Genevieve. I waited way too long to say something, blah, blah, blah. Finally got on medication. It literally solved all my problems. It was amazing. Best decision I ever made was finally saying something to my doctor. So this time around, I'd mentioned both to my primary care doctor and my OBGYN like, hey, I had postpartum depression last time. What do we do this time around? Like, do I just like, if I'm feeling that way, just give you a call? And so both of them said, 
honestly, you should just get on the medicine right away, like right after you have her. And my OBGYN said, honestly, let's go ahead and get you on it now. And so I started it like a week before I even had her because it takes a few weeks to like really kick in and start working. So I did. Y'all, this has been such a different experience. I'm three weeks postpartum and typically the baby blues, which I'm gonna touch on in a sec, lasts for like the first only two weeks, sometimes three, even within that range. Like I'll tell you about a spell I have with the baby blues, but I feel so different, so different than I did that other time. And what that tells me is that that really was postpartum depression. I knew it was, but like, it's nice to see it from another perspective and be like, whoa, what I was feeling absolutely was not normal. It was not normal. And it was just, just so you know, if you, I've talked about it a lot, but I know not everyone has seen every single one of my videos. For me, postpartum depression was like, I would feel hopeless. Like I would feel like, what's the point of anything? And you know, things I love doing, I would force myself to do, but I didn't really want to do them. And I. I was really, really impatient with Genevieve as a baby. And I think there's a normal level to that, but now feeling how I, I've been feeling with Felicity, I'm like, but that wasn't a normal level of that. It really wasn't. And so just really looking at all of that, but the hopelessness was my biggest thing. Like that was always the word I used when Tyler would be like, so how is it that you're feeling? And hopeless was always the word that came to mind. I can't explain it. So being on that medication, I don't know if because this was such a much smoother birth experience, maybe I wouldn't have had postpartum depression at all. Maybe not, but I will say I, whatever is working, whether it's the actual medicine or just because it was a different experience, maybe it's a combo of both. This is like enjoyable. <laughs> and that makes me really sad to say, but like this is enjoyable to me at this point. And I, I never thought I would feel three weeks postpartum that this is enjoyable and I'm still tired and we're still up but I, it just feels different y'all and it's amazing. So that is all. So, oh, the baby blue story. So about a week postpartum, maybe less, I had this moment where I was feeding her yet again and I would, okay, loud enough. I was feeding her and like sitting on the couch and we were watching Superstore, a show I love, I don't know. And I just suddenly had kind of a similar feeling to the postpartum depression. I don't know how to explain it, but it was just like sadness. And then I would feel guilty that like, if I wasn't playing with Genevieve, I'd feel guilty about that because I, I wanted to be able to split my time and be with her. And then also the recovery from a C-section can be hard because the, you're, there's not a lot you can do that first week, really a few weeks, but especially that first week where, you know, her walking around doesn't feel great and you can't do a lot. And all those things I was used to doing as trivial as they sound, dishes, laundry, you know, just taking a walk around the neighborhood, I really couldn't do yet. And that was frustrating to me. So it was just a mix of all of that, of feeling guilty about poor Genevieve and not getting to play with her because I had so much time spent on the baby, always being needed by the baby, not being able to do normal things and also just being in pain. It was just a, and also just the hormones of just having had a baby really rough combo. And so I just remember crying and crying and crying. And then the next day I was still kind of feeling waves of that feeling. So I was trying to do some more normal things. Like I'd read Gigi a bedtime story. I couldn't give her a bath and like bend over and do that. But reading her a bedtime story, like those kinds of bits of normalcy helped, but it still wasn't right. And I remember like we ended up going out to eat. Was that the day? Like we went to the library and then went out to eat and that started like getting out of the house felt really good. By the next day, I didn't feel any of that anymore. And so I really think it was just the hormones, the true baby blues that you feel maybe for a couple days, maybe a week within those first few weeks. But I'm here as a, with, with a PSA. If you're like three or four weeks postpartum plus and you're still feeling that way, please talk to your doctor. Thank me later. Yes, it's an awkward conversation. Just do it. Just do it, just do it, just do it because I promise you'll thank me later. You can actually enjoy it because that's not normal to feel it that at that point. Okay, that is all. And if that if you were waiting on a sign, that was your sign. Okay. <laughs> Most of you guys watching this are like, Jessica, I'm not even planning on having a baby or I'm way past that or, but I feel like it needed to be said because it is not talked about enough, I don't think. And I think it's so freaking important to talk about. Okay, I think that's everything. <laughs> This is like the longest video ever. I uh, I feel like I could just talk and talk and talk, but um, I guess I want, she's kind of, I think she might be sleeping. Let me see, I need to feed her soon, I know. I was gonna bring her in and show her to you, but she's sleeping. So I'll just put a picture here or maybe even like a little video over this of just her, cause she's so cute, but she's just a little pumpkin. She's still uh, so small. <laughs> it's only three weeks old. They're just so small and I'm trying to like soak in these moments because you forget it so fast and they grow so fast 
And so Ty and I are both like this time around, like, okay, we've got to soak in how tiny she is. She looks like, well, I'll walk around and hold her and she looks like just like a tiny little gummy bear and it's so cute. So, and the other thing is a lot of you guys have asked like, who does she look like more or who does she look like Genevieve? Every once in a while I look at her and I'm like, wow, she looks just like Genevieve. And then other times I'm like, okay, no, she looks totally different. I honestly don't know who she looks like. I think she looks a little bit more like my side of the family sometimes. And then other times I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks just like Tyler. So Genevieve looks a lot like Tyler, like a lot. And so a jury's still out on Felicity, but she is cute as a button, that much I know. And uh, yeah, so that's all. If you watch this whole freaking video, I love you. Thank you so much. I uh, was probably way too specific and took forever to tell these stories, but I appreciate you sticking through with me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm sure the second I turn this freaking camera off, I'm gonna think of like six more things I wanted to share, but I'm around, I'll be on my Instagram stories. I'm vlogging all the time. I'm in the middle of vlogging right now. My first postpartum vlog, it's not really about postpartum though. I just mean like since having the baby, that's really the point. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe. And again, if you wanna watch more of my like pregnancy and baby videos, I will link that playlist below because there's a lot on there. Um, yeah. Also, if you were curious, this freaking zip up hoodie, Amazon. I love how bright pink this is. It makes me so happy. Also, it's really convenient for nursing, I have to say. Okay, I'll let you go. Bye. <laughs>